muscarinic and nicotinic actions briefed out and knowledge of drug names under the head of cholinergic drugs or cholinergic agonists is what we are getting our handle on today. With the festival of colors knocking our doors, no more delay. Welcome all to Is Pharmacology Difficult podcast. I'm your host Dr. Radhika Vijay, MBBS MD, Pharmacology and this is the audio hub to get the best simplified basic tips, strategies, methods and lots of ideas to learn better, understand better and make your concepts crystal clear. If you really find and if there's a question hovering in your mind, is pharmacology difficult? Lend me your ears for a while and let in the magic of knowledge. As I titled, the muscarinic and nicotinic actions will be briefed out, starting on first and foremost with the muscarinic actions. The whole discussion will be done under the three heads. The actions of the M1 receptor, the actions of the M2 receptor and the actions of the M3 receptor. Actually, you can tabulate them in three columns, M1 receptor, M2 receptor, M3 receptor. Starting off first and foremost with M1 receptor. The site is the gastrointestinal tract and specifically they are present on the parietal cells and they lead to the increased acid secretion in the stomach. Nothing more to talk about the M1 receptors. Coming over to M2 receptors, the site will be the heart. Yes, they are found in heart, especially at the sinoatrial node and the atria where they function to decrease the heart rate and decrease the force of contraction of the heart. At the atrioventricular node, they function to decrease the conduction velocity. Again, no more account of the M2 receptor. Let's move on to the M3 receptor. Well, I have a good gracious account for the sites and for the actions which are related and to be discussed under this head. So let's get started. The first site is the eye. And especially in the eye, I want to talk about the iris muscles and the ciliary muscles. The acetylcholine, it causes contraction of both these muscles resulting in the meiosis and loosening of the suspensory ligaments. All in all, what is going on? Yes, this is known as the accommodation for the near vision. Now I want to let you know that acetylcholine action also aids in the disease of the eye that is glaucoma by decreasing the intraocular pressure due to the contraction of the ciliary muscles of the eye. So here in the eye, the action of acetylcholine on the M3 receptors is really figure out table. The next side I want to talk about is the lacrimal glands where while acting on the M3 receptors, acetylcholine causes excessive lacrimation. Next side I want to talk about is the lungs and especially the M3 receptors, they are present on the bronchial smooth muscles and the mucous glands. Where the action of acetylcholine, it causes contraction of the bronchial muscles and the secretions are enhanced. Next site, the gastrointestinal tract, where it causes excessive salivation, increased peristaltic movements and increased gastric secretions. Moving on further, the next site I have to account for is the blood vessels. Now, for your kind information, the blood vessels are having only M3 receptors, but they are lacking the parasympathetic innervation. So when the drug is given exogenously, I'm talking about acetylcholine being given exogenously, it decreases the blood pressure. The endothelium derived relaxing factor is released and that is nothing but nitric oxide. Do you have any idea why the intravenously administered acetylcholine initially exhibits bradycardia shortly followed by 
tachycardia. Now this is explained simply by the baroreceptor reflex. It is a sort of a compensatory sympathetic discharge at the heart. From my discussion, it is seeming that majority of organs possess M3 receptors as compared to the M1 and M2 receptors. Now one more site to know and that is the urinary bladder where both the muscles, I mean detrusor muscle and the sphincter, they possess M3 receptors. The results of the stimulation via the acetylcholine are contraction of the muscles and relaxation of the sphincter. All in all, it leads to increased urination. M3 receptors, they are also found on the pancreatic sinus cells and the sweat glands. And at both these sites, secretions, they are enhanced. Next, you need to know that in the male genital organs, M3 response is observed in the form of vasodilatation and erection of the erectile tissue. Now, just one more important to note point about the sweat glands is that they actually receive the sympathetic innovation but the response is cholinergic and that's quite contradictory but amazingly true. Let us proceed to accomplish the next target of the day that is knowing how acetylcholine functions via the nicotinic receptors. Both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic ganglia, they are activated. I'm talking about the capital N, N receptors at these ganglia. It leads to the firing at the postganglionic neurons. There is release of acetylcholine or noradrenaline depending upon the nature of the neuron. Next point. It's observed in general that almost all the organs, they are innervated dually with both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic supplies but the resultant action is a consequence of the dominant supply of that particular organ as i have very good two examples to make you understand this concept in the gastrointestinal tract cholinergic supply is predominant so the actions which are observed they are increased peristaltic movements and increased secretions while that is totally opposite in the blood vessels where the nicotinic receptors when activated result in the adrenergic action like vasoconstriction other versatile effects noticed are as follows capital n m receptors on the neuromuscular junction they lead to muscle contraction while capital N, N receptors on the adrenal medulla, they cause the release of adrenaline. Now finally, I have a word about the term cholinomimetics, which are also termed as parasympathomimetics. Now you notice that there is a suffix, mimetic. Let's interpret the meaning out of this suffix. It simply means that drugs, they are behaving like acetylcholine or we can understand that they are imitating the actions of acetylcholine. So that is why they are cholino or parasympathomimetic. The various routes or the mechanisms of their actions could be either direct interaction with the receptor or it can be by enhancing the concentration of acetylcholine at the site of action. Either way, they are aptly called as cholino or parasympathomimetics and there is no doubt about it. Now what I intend to do next is to make you all aware of the drug names which will form the talking point in the upcoming episodes. We better get weaving now. Okay, I'll get you know the names of these cholinergic drugs or we can also call them cholinergic agonists under three heads. The first head is of the esters of the choline. Now these can be natural or the prototype drug that is acetylcholine or they can be synthetic drugs like carbacol, methacholine and bethanicol. 
The second head is of the natural alkaloids. Amongst them, the most important is the pilocarpine, followed by muscarine, nicotine, and one new name, aracoline. The last head is about the miscellaneous drugs, which you need to know the names. The most important among these is the sevimeline. Then we have tremorine and oxotremorine. What are the details? What are all these drugs about? We'll get to know in the upcoming episodes. So finally, I've brought to light this great, good, gracious cholinergic lore today. It's time to let the colors fly their way. A little piece of advice to stay blithe and safe. For all the updates and latest episodes of my podcast, do visit www.pharmacologydifficult.com where you can also subscribe for a free monthly e-newsletter of mine. It actually contains a lot of updates about medical sciences and drug information updates and my podcast updates also. You can follow me on different social media handles like Twitter, Insta, Facebook and LinkedIn. They all are with the same name is Pharmacology Difficult. If you are listening for the first time, do subscribe and follow whatever platform you are consuming this episode. Stay tuned. Do rate and review on iTunes, Apple Podcast. Stay safe, stay happy, stay enlightened. Thank you.